In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about awkward holiday conversation topics and how to navigate them. And yes, I'm going to include a shameless book plug for my new book, The Words of Caterpillar 8. Oh, wait. The Words of Caterpillar 8, which is a great place to start if you're wanting to equip yourself with some tools and strategies to look at how you navigate these conversations. But Let's jump in to this topic for today because I know it's a hot one and you're in good hands in terms of awkward holiday conversations because personally I have the father of my children at our holiday events and my amazing husband at our holiday events. They are two separate people and they share the same name. So you're in good hands and good company. Anyway, the holidays are a time for friends, family, weird families like mine where we're not really the norm so that you can actually have a good time together sharing turkey maybe listening to someone who sounds like a turkey and that's right inevitably some awkward conversation topics are going to come up you know the ones where you get asked about how your career is going how that little hobby thing business of yours is going when it's actually providing a fund for your mortgage and it's feeding your children and all those kinds of things or your career goals or why are you still single or if you're not single why have you not had a child yet or when are you getting married if you're in a couple or any of those things all those topics or is that a baby that you have there bell no no it's not it's a gluten reaction but thank you for asking. This is my body, not yours. Anyway, these types of conversations inevitably crop up in the holiday season and never fear, you're not alone. I'm here to help you navigate these topics, the most awkward ones. And I even have another book, which I can't find right now called Awkward is a New Brave, which is all about awkward conversations. So as I dive in to give you some practical tips and strategies to navigate holiday conversations with your family, whether you are celebrating Thanksgiving in the Americas or somewhere else in the world, whether you're getting ready for Hanukkah, whether you are celebrating Christmas or any of the other festivities that are happening at this time of year, the first step is to be prepared. Yes, no doubt you will be asked about something and the best way that you can handle it is to be prepared. So before heading into any potentially awkward conversations, whether Aunt Betty loves to ask you about your love life or you've got that weird uncle who thinks that he knows everything about business, even though he's never run one, take a few minutes to think about how you want to answer those questions before you start participating in the conversation. Now, quite often their intent may be really honourable and they will probably be looking at ways to engage you and talk about things and their definitions of those types of words or milestones might be based on their own life experiences. So maybe their intention is good, they're not meaning to upset you, but just take those things into mind. And in the book, yes, here's the book again, um, I do talk about generational word diets and how they start to form and what you can do to navigate them. So little resource here if you need it. Or buy it as a gift for someone who you think could really get a bit of a wake up call and think about what they're saying. Either way, win-win. Anyway, getting back to being prepared, this way you won't be caught off guard if you're thinking about how you're going to handle those topics, whether they're asking you about your business idea, asking you about a new book that you wrote, asking you about how your blended family is going, any of those things. If you're not caught off guard, then you won't find yourself stumbling over your words or give, having your body give off little micro communication signals where you eye roll, or where you clench your teeth, or where you feel your shoulders tighten up, where your family can see they have inevitably pressed a button and got a reaction from you. If you're prepared, you'll come across as confident and collected, even if you're feeling anything but on the inside. Now, the next strategy is one that I talk about to handle in a different way as well, and that is to give a deflection. If you really don't want to answer a question, there's nothing wrong with deflecting. Now, I'll drop a link to a video below where I talk about how to get people back on track if they are deflecting, because sometimes it's not a good strategy, but in this case, it can be really useful. What you can do in this situation is try changing the subject or answering one um, with a question of your own. 
So what, something I love to do with people who might be asking a curly question is to just clarify what's their intention because that might actually help them with their own awareness. Or you could even ask them for a recommendation on things. So say if they are asking you about um, how your business is going, you can say it's going great thanks or I'm in the early stages. Have you got a book that you could recommend on that? That actually helps you to be prepared and ha handle those tricky situations and also it might kind of trigger for them that maybe they're not the expert in their area or maybe they could find a book for you. You never know. Or for example, if you're asked about your love life, you could say something like I'm focusing on my career and my business right now and or you could say it's as it's meant to be how's your love life now if you're asking the love life like that love life question of someone who's been married for 40 plus years so it's an elderly relative you might get some really interesting responses so whatever it is be be conscious of it and remember that doing those kinds of things and also asking questions will balance out the conversation and it will buy you some time to think about any other answers the other thing that you can do with deflecting is saying that's a really good question and right now I don't have an answer for you because I'm working out what that looks like for me. Now the third option that you have and this is definitely if it fits your personality zone and you're comfortable in doing it, you can be witty. So for example if you're asked how your dating life is going you could say it's a little bit tricky right now you've just become a vegan and some guy took you to uh, or you can eat barbecue buffet and that might get a bit of a giggle from them and from you. So in wrapping this up, no matter how much you prepare for Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas lunch or brunch or whatever it is or Hanukkah, there's always going to be one awkward conversation to throw things off. But remember, if you've got these tips ready and you know how to deflect, whether it's to change the topic or offer them like a snack to eat or get someone a drink, or it's to be witty or it's to have your answers prepared, you'll be able to navigate this holiday season in style and hold your boundaries like a queen without sounding like a bee. So anyway, I hope you've had some fun and if you've got some other curly topics that tend to come up, feel free to share your story below so that other people know that they're not alone. I'll be wishing you a Merry Christmas and remember once again, shameless book plug, the words of Caterpillar 8, which is all about changing the language of you to get out of the goo, might just be your ticket to navigating the holiday season. It's on pre-order now. It's released on the 22nd of November, right in time for Thanksgiving. So I will be cheering you on as you navigate these conversations with confidence and with class. I'll catch you in my next video. Bye for now. they can see that they have inevitably, inevitably, <laughs> they can see they have in, oh, I can't speak. That would be a good one, Lina. Pause.